All right, so it's about 12.37 and I have like, what, 23 minutes to record and edit this video for you guys. So this is a comparison video between the 1799 10th generation MacBook Pro and then the lower end 1299 8th generation MacBook Pro. And some of you guys may have noticed that I had a video yesterday titled Avoid the 1799 model. And that video overall got some nice feedback and I read through every single comment. And pretty much through my discussion, I decided to make a proper video with evidence behind what I found in my testing and also changed my testing a little bit. I made it a little bit more intensive. And I think my results are pretty much the same of what I had before, but I think you guys will now be able to see what I'm seeing and you can make your judgments through there. But with that out the way, I'm going to start with the real world application testing first. And then the second half of the video will be more of just the general overview. Starting off what I did, instead of using iMovie, I was thinking people who use these computers are professionals and they're going to be using professional applications. So I got Final Cut Pro and for the first test, I imported a 1080p video that's 10 minutes long and export it out in 1080p. And the results for what I ran, the eighth generation finished in two minutes, 20 seconds, and then the 10th generation finished in three minutes, four seconds. Overall, the eighth generation finished it faster in Final Cut Pro in 1080p. So then for my 4K testing, I imported a 4K video in Final Cut Pro, that's kind of redundant, and I exported out in 4K. So the 8th generation finished it in 8 minutes 40 seconds and the 10th generation finished it in 9 minutes 20 seconds. So I'm not sure if Apple has released an update or I don't want to say a patch that's optimizing the 10th generation chips because the fans were pretty much maxed out on the 8th generation whereas on the 10th generation it was ramping up quite a bit when it started doing the 4K testing but Overall, it just seemed to lag behind the 8th generation. And keep in mind that this base model only has 8 gigabytes of RAM that's clocked on a lower clock speed on DDR3, where this one has double the RAM, faster clock speed. So maybe Apple will release an update to better optimize this computer. But from there, I moved over to Adobe Premiere and it's almost flipped. So in Adobe Premiere, I did the same test, imported a 1080p file, exported a 1080p file, and for the results, the eighth generation finished it in one minute, 48 seconds. And then the 10th generation finished it in two minutes and 18 seconds. So, I mean, that's only like a 30 second difference, but as you scale up to like longer and longer videos and over time, you will begin to see that difference. So moving on to 4K, this is where it flips. So in Adobe Premiere, I did the same thing, imported 4K file, exported out in 4K and the Eighth generation did it in 13 minutes, 36 seconds. And then the 10th generation did it in four minutes, 48 seconds on much lower temperatures. So it seems that Adobe has better optimized the 10th generation chips that Apple has made, or it's just that since this has dual fans, it's able to sustain that longer clock speed. But it's a little confusing why Final Cut Pro wasn't replicating the same thing at longer durations. But I would say as of now, if you are a Adobe user on macOS that if you are editing in 4K, the 10th generation is gonna be a better fit for you. And if you're a professional, um, I mean, maybe you are recording in 4K, but I would say that if you are Adobe and you're doing 1080p, that this one is the better buy. Um, so with that, I moved over to Zoom. And instead of just doing like a presentation, I made it a little bit more intensive just to get, I guess, the full power of these machines. So I shared my screen. I had seven tabs open as a total. Five of them were just stack overflow of how to make a for loop in Python. I had a Netflix show playing in the background and I had a uh, chilled cow, uh, just like music that's playing in the background. And overall, the temperatures were pretty much the same. So fans were audible on both, but the biggest difference between the two was after about three minutes, the 1799 model I'm just gonna say 1800 from now on. The 1800 model kind of, it got quieter, I guess, when the CPU was, I guess, optimizing everything that it was doing. It started to cool itself down, the temperatures were dying down, the fans were dying down, whereas on the 1300 model, it was pretty much consistently running at the max fan speed, and the temperatures were sitting at 
I don't have it off the top of my head, but you guys will be able to see on the screen. So with that, what I was really trying to get across was that for the value that this product brings, I'm just not seeing it for 500 extra dollars. And that's pretty much where I was getting frustrated. Now moving on to the general comparison. So this 1300 model only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the side, whereas on the 1800, 1800 model, you have four Thunderbolt 3 ports on either side, which people find very useful. So you're not just limited to plugging things on the left-hand side on the 1300 model. It gives you, I guess, more flexibility if you want to plug something in and also just gives you um, a lot more functionality if you do plug this into a lot of other devices. Not this one, this one. You do plug this one into more devices. The 1800 model is going to be a better buy for you with those extra two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Um, touch bars are the same, trackpads are the same, keyboards are the same. Overall build quality is essentially the same. On the outside, these things are nearly identical. But one thing I want to note, on the bottom of the 1800 model, you do have vents on the side, and I guess this does help with the speakers as well. Whereas on the 1300 model, we do not have those vents or fans. So that's another thing you wanna note. Um, if you do open up these laptops, this one does have an extra fan to cool this 10th generation chip. I think it really needs it from the temperatures that I've seen. I don't know how this thing would perform with just one fan, but overall, I would say that this one is quieter with two fans. Another person brought, up, brought it up. Um, with two fans, since it's running at half the RPM, it's going to be an overall quieter machine. But once you do start to ramp up this machine and start pushing it, it does get louder than this one. But I would say overall battery life I've seen is better when I'm doing my, when I was doing my testing, battery life was better on the 10th generation. So one more thing I want to note is that, what time is it? So one more thing I want to note is that this 10th generation felt uh, just a slight bit more snappier. Um, and I guess it's going to, I guess it's going to improve over time. So that's one thing to know if you do care about things opening up quicker, just the snappiness feel of products, I would say go for this 1800 model. But now I want to test the speakers because the speakers are different. They are better in the 1800 model. So let me play a quick clip for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to play music first on the 1800 model and then I'm just going to switch back and forth. So starting in three, two, one. <laughs> this one does put a smile on my face. So the 1300 model, I don't know if the microphone is picking it up enough. The 1300 model sounds good, but it is overall quieter. Whereas this 1800 model sounds much better. I can feel the bass from, not it's not shaking my table, but I can definitely feel it. It's almost like, like when you go to a concert and the music's so loud that it's like hitting you in the, che in the chest, you can kind of feel that. Um, so I guess if you are an audiophile or if you enjoy watching TV shows and movies on your computer, I would say that you should spend the extra money on the $1,800 model. But um, I would say that if you are spending that much money for a laptop and you're just watching TV shows and movies, that you should probably just get a really nice TV and a sound bar and it'll be a much better experience, much better. Um, next, 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 next. So next we have to do the camera and a microphone test, so. All right, so this is the 12, $1,300 model MacBook Pro. Um, you guys can let me know how it sounds. Uh, camera quality actually looks pretty good in the light, um, but yep, that's pretty much it for this one. So this is the recording testing on the $1,800 model on MacBook Pro. You guys can tell me how it looks and sounds. Um, comparatively speaking, I think 
I overall kind of like the colors on the $1,300 model, but that just be that could just be from the lighting. But yeah, overall, I think they're both pretty good when the light is hitting you. Way and we are towards the end of this quick comparison video that you guys need to know. So, what is the better buy? So the reason why I made that video yesterday was I was stressing value over pricing or price to performance, I should say. And from the testing that I did yesterday and now today, I still kind of stand firm that if you are on a tight budget or you don't really need that extra, extra performance, I would say that, that you should get this $1,300 model. It's just more value for your money. However, one thing I do want to note because I have changed my position a little bit, um, this $800 model is good if you want to if you aren't a person who typically updates their laptops too often, I would say that <sighs> spend that extra $500 and get this model. You are getting newer hardware and Apple will more than likely optimize this chip later down the road for you. And that extra RAM as well as faster RAM will help, help you in the long run. You are getting 512 gigabytes of storage and yeah, that's pretty much just my findings. Oh, I almost forgot about Mozilla Firefox. So Mozilla Firefox, so the 10th generation did it in about 53 minutes and the 8th generation did it in about 61 minutes. So um, I, guess, I guess as your project expands bigger and bigger, the times are going to be, uh, I guess, the distance, not distance, I'm thinking of like physics right now. Um, the performance gap is going to be bigger and bigger. So that's Firefox. I almost forgot that, glad I included that in. But yeah, overall price to performance, I just think that this $1,300 is a better buy. For me personally, I'm going to go with this $1,300 model as my personal laptop. I just don't see the performance in this computer as of now. And you know, I do think Apple is probably going to optimize this chip, but I think with optimization in this one, will more than likely carry over to this one. I don't know, but I just think that for my money right now, in terms of value, that this $1,300 model is the better buy. Like I said before, if you are a person who doesn't like to update their laptops too often, then this $1,800 model is probably better for you. Also, if you are an Adobe 4K editor. So that's going to wrap up this video. Am I good on time? 12, 16, 12, 56. My brain is done right now, but I gotta get back to work. Hope you guys did enjoy the video and subscribe if you want to see more tech content. Uh, don't rule out the iPad Pro and uh, I think that's it guys. Much love.